Today I'm trying to start thinking about tiling the backsplash. So I picked some really beautiful tile. I want to show you what I picked. So I really love this color of terracotta with the blue. What do you guys think? I really liked sort of the scalloped edge. I liked the way this top worked out. So if I can hold these. These scallop tops along the top of all the of the tiles will be exposed. So there's not gonna be another tile piece that's gonna cover this up. So that's that idea. I just wanted to make sure that my tile design would work and to see how many cuts I would need. So I've never really tiled before. So I had some contact paper left over with adhesive. Usually when you tile, you're gonna tile from the bottom going up. But because I want to preserve this top design, I'm going to tile from the top to the bottom. Um, and I'm hoping that that's not going to cause any problems. So I thought that I could get a better idea of the design layout just using this contact paper. I am attempting to tile this back of the cabinet and underneath this cabinet backsplash. But it is like a really weird... I don't even know what it's called, like a sheetrock type, and the paint wasn't coming off, so it is a mess. So I had to call my contractor friend, Joe. He's fantastic. There's so many things online, and I didn't know who to trust because you you can't ordinarily put tile directly onto any kind of plywood. Plywood absorbs water differently, absorbs the mastic differently that holds the, your tile. So those two things could create some cracks and problems down the line. My friend Joe thought that because the tile was not going to be used for flooring, that I should be fine tiling directly over the plywood. I stripped the plywood of all the paint or as much paint as I could get off. So before I do any tiling, before I do anything else, the first thing that we're going to do is to roll on a layer of this Eco Prim Grip. And honestly, I could only find this at Floor and Decor and at Lowe's. So let's do that. And he said to put it on all the entire surface. Okay, here is a progress report. The Eco Prim grip is all dry. It's got a cement feel and it's got little sand particles to really feel like it can really grip the tile. So I feel good about that. Now, just to recap, the tile is gonna start about here. So above the tile, I have put a drywall mud. I have one more layer to smooth this all out, but that is gonna be on top. This is gonna be painted. So I'm gonna just start the tiling here. Okay. And the tile will continue below this mud line. Carafix Plus, and the reason why I'm using this mortar is because I am placing tile on sort of non-traditional substrates like wood and what I think is sheetrock. dried overnight and I'm ready to do some specialty cuts on the tile. So I was able to use that manual tile cutter up until this point. I have to be able to cut sort of an L cut into the next piece of tile in order to fit the light switch. Okay, so I am on my way to Home Depot because I didn't have the right equipment to cut 
precise cuts and I can't tell you I've cracked so many tiles that I don't have many left they rent a mini water tile cutter and you can rent it for the whole day for $23 I was so psyched to use this water tile cutter that when I turned it on, it wasn't even moving the tile forward. So I called Home Depot's self-help desk. They stopped the rental clock, which was nice. So I didn't have to pay money. They helped me troubleshoot the fact that the blade was not bolted on correctly. So I tightened that up and we were ready to go. This was the most important cut to fit around that light switch. All right, let's keep on going. Quick update, where are we now? So I have cut, specialty cut, all of the tiles around the light switches and all that. And now all the tiles have been installed with mortar. They've dried it for 24 hours and now it's time to put grout in. I'm here at Floor and Decor trying to figure out what grout color to choose. And yeah, that's a little daunting. So you go up to the front desk and they'll give you this sample deck and you just have to return it back to the front desk, but you can choose any of the colors here. And I know I don't want to do anything white. Okay, you guys, I think the winner is Navajo Brown. Time to grow. I'll be coming home. Then I'll be at your door When I'll be coming home I plan to let you know The longing of my heart The wish I carry high So just some final details that I have to take care of. I turned the power off. I made the mistake of not turning the power off and I didn't get shocked, but there was a little bit of a spark when I used the screwdriver. So don't make the same mistake. Once the thicker tile is installed, the socket is now too recessed into the wall. We can add plastic spacers behind the socket to solve the problem. At any hardware store carries them. But once you push the light socket forward, you're also gonna need a longer screw. So one thing that I had to do, because I didn't know how much depth there would be, I went to my hardware store and they gave me several different options in terms of length of screws that could fit. So then you take your spacer, which looks like this, and this fits right over the screw head. So I have to admit, this was so satisfying, I felt like a DIY baller. Okay, here's my new scallop tiled kitchen backsplash in three, two, one. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for sticking you with me during my entire it. kitchen renovation. It's time we make a change. I hope you feel a little boost in confidence that you can tackle something like this in your own boutique kitchen. Like, subscribe, comment. I'd love to hear from you. See you next time on Not Show Living. We'll work it out. You'll see if we get in a car and drive someplace far.